irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Jenny's Real Talk on the Block with Jennifer DeVoe, only on L.A. Talk Radio. <laughs> uh, what's up, all my motherfuckers out there in radio land? It's time to get a thrilling, exciting installment. Uh, you guess it. Jenny's Real Talk on the blog, coming live at you each and every Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's produced by Get Real Global Entertainment, LLC. <laughs> and I wasn't paid to say that. <laughs> this is Jenny. Again, this is Jenny, Jenny's Real Talk on the Block, LA Whoever Talk Radio, you Channel you 1. Oh, uh, I need to turn your fucking mic on. That might help. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is your hostess with the mostest, Jennifer DeVoe, and my charming co-host, <laughs> business partner, and husband. <laughs> oh, sorry, a.k.a. the husband. A.k.a. the husband. <laughs> yes, JJ. What's up? Smoky. <laughs> What's up? Um, I'm Smoky. We're here for another wonderful Wednesday like we are every single week. Imagine that every Wednesday, 3 or 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have way too fucking Drop much. what you're doing. Drop what you're doing, you motherfuckers. Leave your Get kids in the bathtub. Share Leave your dogs bitch. in the hot car. Why are you not watching us? <laughs> what the fuck is your problem? Leave your kids in the hot car. <laughs> Leave your kids in the hot car. I mean, your what? dogs in the hot car. What? Leave your kids in the bathtub. Leave the kids. What? And listen to <laughs> Jenny, you were talking about. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> It's... The radio's so hard, it punches you right in the nuts. Anyway. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> anyway, uh, we yes, have... Yes, I must have gone to the left. <laughs> <laughs> we um, are here today having way too much fucking fun. <laughs> we have our wonderful guest. Uh, she's... <laughs> her name is Cynthia Hammer. And she's smoky right too by now, too. <laughs> No, that's not right. Don't talk no, about that. No, man, I'm talking about that. I know, them. I know. We'll, we'll, t- we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me introduce the guest first. Let me talk about the guest. <coughs> don't introduce. Don't fuck up my shit. <laughs> Every goddamn time. Every week. You fuck up my shit. No, I'm just kidding. Shut, 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 shut. <laughs> anyway. Don't you believe it. Don't step on my toes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, we, our guest this week is author Cynthia Hammer um, of the books Iceberg and A Good Cause. Uh, she is also Yay. an inspirational and motivational speaker as well as a um, Christian. And also, uh, we'll see. Oh, radio DJ. Oh, Radio yeah. host. All she of that. Uh, hosts a radio show. She does. Uh, Call Hammer Away. Here on LA Talk Radio Channel One, uh, so check her out. Check her show out every week. Uh, this to uh, every Wednesday, two to three p.m. Uh, right before our show. Uh, it's called Hammer Away with Cynthia Hammer. Now, um, what my wonderful husband was talking about a minute ago, <laughs> uh, saying Smoky, um, is because there are really, 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 really bad wildfires going on in um, Southern California. Southern California. Over mm-hmm. here in Ventura, it was a, uh, well, this is, um, what is this? The Valley. This this is the San Fernando Valley. San Fernando Valley. Yeah. So it's hitting, what, Ventura Ventura County and here, yeah, about both? 40, about 40 about miles. 40, 40 miles. 40, what did they say? 40,000 acres or more? Yeah, it's about 40,000. It's huge. It's huge. A huge uh, wildfire out of control, yeah. and this well, is not good. And we can yeah. literally, we're sitting here in Sherman Oaks, California, right now, looking out the window of the radio station at the hills and everything, and we can see the smoke clouds rolling the fuck in. Like, it's rolling. The smoke the is really bad. The sky is brown, The sky is, it's really bad. Like, um, I want, I'm want i praying for all the friends and family, all the people here in the valley uh, to please be safe and get to safety. Even your home is, I'm sorry it's your home, but take take your personal shit and get out. Take the stuff that really means Man. the most to you and leave. Because it takes some clothes, house. whatever you can take with you, please get I mean, out. If you can get a it's picture, not it's whatever, but get the family get, get Get the important shit, the stuff that's really important to you that you cannot replace. 
you know, get all your uh, your whatever uh, uh, as many clothes as you can and get the fuck out if as you quick have, as possible. Uh, if you have get family in the city, you know, I would suggest yeah, go go in go, in town. go to family. Go yeah. in town because right now this is really bad. Um, Somewhere toward the ocean, maybe if you have somebody uh, yeah. downtown. Yeah. Um, downtown, all Cobra the mi- all the missions are getting the um, overflow of people. Yeah, the Hope Gardens uh, rescue mission over here in the valley in Silmar uh, burnt down. I guess, Ooh, or really? yeah, or it got destroyed or something, and they had to evacuate it and uh, send Ooh. all of the people to downtown. A lot of them went to the Union Rescue Mission. Um, some of them went to L.A. Mission. Some went to Midnight Mission. And oh, anywhere else they could possibly house either. them. Yeah, a lot of people uh, are... Um, like Affected. Like homeless, like homeless when they were already homeless to begin with. Now they're they're put out of... Now the shelter. The one little bit, the little bit of thing that they had, now they they got to be replaced and put downtown. So they put them downtown. And there's a lot of people... Um, they're becoming homeless because their homes are getting uh, burnt, uh, and it's it's not good. So we want to pray uh, for everybody here in the valley, uh, anywhere up here that you that tour, you're okay, uh, uh, that yeah, you're okay. Uh, you know, anywhere that these this stuff is going on, uh, please. I don't care if it's Montana. I don't care if it's Washington. No, Oregon. we don't care. We we care about everybody. Yeah, so we don't care where the anywhere fire there's is. going yeah. anywhere there's anything going on flooding, Flood, hurricanes, uh, hurricanes tornadoes, tornadoes anything, anything anything we we uh, you know we pray for all of you. So stay safe, everyone. Yeah, stay safe, everybody. But especially right now, we're looking out the window and we're seeing a lot of smoke rolling in. We can't even see the hills, uh, and it's not no, that far from. Can't us. see anything. It's pretty bad. Um, so anyway, uh, like I said, our guest this week is author. Inspirational, motivational speaker, and uh, on-air personality and producer, right. Cynthia Hammer. Yes. Uh, from the radio show Hammer Away. So uh, be prepared to have a great time. So if they She know. cannot be in the studio with us today because of the fires. Um, they have a warning uh, out saying, do not uh, go on the highways unless, unless you really have to. Because I guess they have a uh, travel warning. And uh, so... Uh, she could not do her own show today, unfortunately, because of that same thing. But it's okay. She said she's going to call in uh, if possible, and uh, we look forward to talking to her. And if not, we always have lots of stuff to do. <laughs> so I'm not worried about it. Um, okay, see, let's see. Oh, tonight, go to Skinny's uh, Lounge in North Hollywood, California. Hmm. You can go see the family band Stereo Love. All right. With Judd, uh, Judd Steele on drums. He's the father. Mm-hmm. It's a family band. And then uh, the two, there's two daughters, um, Jewel and, uh, and Lula. The, Jewel is uh, the lead the singer, singer and the guitar and guitarist. Uh-huh. And Lula is the bassist the and backup singer. Okay. And now they also have a new member. I think that's why they want us to check them out yeah. tonight, especially because they have a new member, a keyboardist. Oh. I don't. I can't remember the girl's name, but I will. I will. I will check it out. But we'll go check out Stereo Love tonight at Skinny's Lounge. You don't have to be skinny to go there. I'm just saying Skinny's Lounge. Trust me, I'm not skinny, and, and I'm going. <laughs> Neither am I. Look, chubby cheeks. I'm just saying. Um, go to Skinny's Lounge in North. My wife Hollywood. likes to rub my big fat belly. <laughs> <laughs> Among other big. Fat things. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that. I though. didn't say that. What up, Judd? How's it going, man? We're gonna come watch your show tonight. We did a plug out for you. How you like that? Yes. Uh, Hi. We love you guys. Uh, what's that chick's name? Tell me what's the keyboard's name. Since you're watching, um, uh, type it. Type it on the screen. Justine Willis. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that, Judd. Thank you. All right, Justine Willis is their new keyboardist. Yeah, we will. Yes, and <laughs> people are laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, thank you. I like that. Okay, so cool. <laughs> uh, no, Cynthia, call the radio station, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a broadcast. Okay, hold, hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. That's watch, the guest? watch. I'm gonna take. Yes, watch. I'm gonna take a radio call, a phone call while I'm take, doing this. Hey, watch. Hey, what's up? <laughs> You're you're on Facebook Live right now. What's up? You gonna call the radio station? (laughs) 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 
<laughs> she just fucking called us on the cell phone. She said, oh, shit, goodbye. <laughs> so you're on Facebook right now. <laughs> and he fucking away. We're having too much fucking fun. <laughs> look, look, there's, look, look, there's the husband. Oh, okay, our guest is calling in now. Where's the thing? Okay. You are in the air with Hello, Jenny's Real Talk on the blog. What's up? Is this Cynthia? Yes. Hey, Jenny. Hey, it's the wonderful Cynthia Hi. Hammer. What's up? Hey, James. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Well, actually, I'm still running on like a couple hours sleep. Oh, so wow. So you have to forgive me. I- I'm calling Jenny's phone, and I need to be calling the station. So <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we went to the show uh, for Larry Dunn, Earth, Wind, and Fire, over uh, Sunday night. Oh, oh yeah, wow. was, it, was it good? I'm sure oh, it was. Yeah, it, it was awesome. It was, awesome. was kick ass. So, yeah. I, I, it was kick ass. Guess what? What? The reporter in me spotted Verdine White in the crowd. Oh yeah. Got him. Yeah. Well, got him. Got you know. Took some pictures with him. Yeah. Also had some great dialogue with him. You know, he looked great. Looked like a rock star. There were so many people uh, there in the audience. Tommy Davidson opened. Oh so, wow! Uh, I know we who were, that is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy Davidson from Living Color. Yeah, well, he's you know, funny. you know he's who funny. that is. I like. I like him. Yes. He's funny. Yeah. So my husband and I were practically under the table laughing our asses off because he talked about every, he called, he used every N word, <laughs> talked about every race. There was nobody safe that good. night. <laughs> That's good. That's what they're supposed to do. If you're exactly. going to make fun of and, one, you got to make fun uh, of all. Offend everyone. <laughs> well, look, everyone was offended because yeah. he said all. something no. about, he started singing in Hispanic, you know, how beautiful the music is. And the people were like, yeah. And he said, oh, there's the dishwashers from the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he was he did he did good. It was good. Um, I can't think of his name. I'm not sure if I, do you, do you guys remember the Apollo? You know, the Apollo was Steve. Yeah. Barbie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The apo- Okay, you remember the lady Kiki Kiki Shepherd, Kiki Shepherd. would hold the Yeah, she was there. Oh wow. I remember cool. she was like a She looking real fine. Wow. Yeah, chocolate mama. Yeah, and then I remember her. Obabe, Obaba Batunde, he played Barry Gordy in The Temptations. Okay, yeah, yeah. The actor, yeah. yeah. And he plays Oh, he I plays know who that damn is. Thing else. I know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you'll see him on NCIS. Uh, he's been on oh, The Bold and the Beautiful for oh, the last, yes. I guess, 20 years. Yeah, I love The Bold and the Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So, um, who was there? Leon Silvers from The Silvers. You remember? I like that song. Yeah. That, I, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. It was a star studded house. Hey, it was a good show. It was a great show. You know, the the mature crowd dressed to the nines. You know how we you know, people clean up. We clean up. Right. And uh no bad seat at the Rose. Um, but I tell you what, they gave us their money's worth. So what did they do? They played two sets and it's like the first set was already two hours and oh, wow. I have to get up at like four. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to beg my husband, come on, let's go. He's like, one more song. Just one like, more. Oh, it's wow. Barbara. No, it's kidding. No, it's kidding. No. <laughs> Say that again. It's, you know how like Barbara Streisand, they all go, oh my God, one more song. <laughs> <laughs> it's Celine Dion. Oh my God. <laughs> like, geez, I don't give a fuck. I don't care, I don't care how fucking good you are. I'm not going to pay $500 to see you. No, it's good. <laughs> Sorry. Say that again. I said I don't care how good they are. I'm not going to pay five hundred dollars to see them. Did I? Who? Who? Barbara Streisand? Any of them? I don't care. (laughs) Too too damn much. Did I tell you that? I was just telling someone. I paid. I paid uh, two grand a ticket to see Barbara Streisand in Philly about six years ago. Wow. Really? I'm still paying off that on my. Yes. Still paying that on her credit card. card. (laughs) Jeez. Still paying that shit on her credit card. Love her. Well, she's awesome. I'm just saying I just don't think I'd ever pay that much to go see somebody. No, yeah, you know. I would have sold my firstborn, but I don't have wow. children, but I would have. Wow, damn. <laughs> 
Led, that may, I guess Led Zeppelin, if John Bonham magically raised from the dead, maybe I'd go. You know, maybe I'd pay <laughs> oh, two grand to you, give up you my would, firstborn. You yeah. would. Yeah, maybe. Because look, it's a once in a lifetime thing. You know, these people, one day their voices will go silent. Right, that's true. They will no and, longer be around. And you know, we got to keep the the, the 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 legacy alive by letting these young kids know that we saw them play, and this is what music really is. Oh, amen. Yeah, I, I yeah, I do that with my kids. I always tell them about all these yeah, different we was, bands. We was listening today. Um, uh, me, Will, and uh, Mike. You know, yeah. Mike. Yeah, he had. We were playing some um, Herbie Hancock. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. And so uh, one of this young good. lady down there's like, I don't like this. We don't like them. We was kind of like, we don't care. We don't really care <laughs> if you like it. Or we not. want we 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 want to hear some some real instruments and you know real music, yeah. real yeah. Right. Yeah, there'd be no Jay Z Z or Puff Daddy if it wasn't Herbie Hancock. Amen. Right, exactly. Amen. Right. Amen to that. I mean. And, but for them not to understand that, you know, we know where rap originated from. Yeah. You know, rap really originated from... Go ahead. Yeah. Like, yeah, it did, it, um, all of the music came from the 70s and 60s R&B uh, records because there were no mu no instruments. Yeah. So they just used, like, their parents, well, uh, the, in the, the records. Mm -hmm. That's why it well, sounds so familiar. And, and, and the beatbox. Yeah. You know, when there oh, was definitely. no trumpet to play in school. Oh, exactly. I remember I used to be boxing yeah. in high school a little bit after. Yeah, I used to be boxing. You know, it would be a crowd of us to get together, a couple of us be box. somebody was rapping, and someone take over. Yeah, it's, you know, that's the, that was the culture. Yeah. It's real good. Exactly. And, and do they, does anybody know rappers do you like? You think those kids know who Sugar Hill is? Nah, not even. <laughs> <laughs> then they need to, we need to snatch their black card or their rap card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they need to take right, it from them. Nice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> needs to be repealed because they don't they don't know you know and then they no. think that they that they are rappers that they listen to got skills and they don't have no idea it needs to be repealed as much as it, and rejected as much as Donald Trump <laughs> needs to be taken out of the presidency <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey that's why we're here Jen hey so the rock and rollers that you two are are you going to the NAM festival in January uh, uh -huh. yes I would like to I've got to get um, I got to send in my accreditation stuff my uh the nam the uh, yeah. national association of music i yeah. guess people I, I, from I, I right to, all yeah. over the world yeah i tried to get in on it last year and, and they said i had to send in my credentials and crap so i was like f yeah. you yeah. and whatever and then so i was like <laughs> <laughs> so i was like so this year i'm like uh, i guess i'll send in my credentials or some crap and whatever you know cuz i was trying to, i was just trying to get in um to cover the event right. and stuff but like, yeah, yeah. Well, if you send in your credentials, I mean, because you, you, you're the rock and roller queen of our station. Yeah. So you're going to see your boys down there, you know, from Sticks to, yeah. uh, they say Sticks and Ario Speedwagon yeah, and all, a lot of maybe them. somebody from Fleetwood Mac. A but they say them, people yeah. from all over the rock and roll world yeah. and country Everybody, world, everybody's going to be there. Yeah, everybody's going to be there. And a lot of local bands are going to be there. Um, the, yeah. Actually, actually, a lot of a lot of local bands have asked me if I was going to be there because they're going to be there. They said, "Are you covering the Performing. event?" Yeah, they said, "Are you covering the event? You need to come down." Everybody's been tell, asking me, "Can you? You need to come down. You need to come you down need there." To get us in, and I'm like, "Okay, I'll, I'll damn get us in then." All right. You get <laughs> well. Uh, I make it seem like it's I a hindrance. You. <laughs> I make it seem like a it's a hindrance. <laughs> like it's such a horrible well, thing. It's pretty crowded. From what I hear, it's really yeah, crowded. It, it is. It, it, I heard it gets pretty um, pretty crowded. Uh, my friend. Well, you want to hear something Mason. messed up? Uh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, we well, want to hear something messed up. I'm gonna give you a story. So, someone turns me on to the Nam Festival. Uh, I have a guest coming on my show, which I don't think will be on my show after this shit. But <laughs> <laughs> they turn me on to the festival. So you know what I'm gonna say, right? Because they have a membership. I'm gonna say, well, do you have an extra ticket? Mm. And they're like, well, 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 no, I don't have an extra ticket. I said, okay, that's cool. I said, well, where do I sign up? They're like, well, well, it's it's a it's a it's a big deal. Uh, it happens every year, but it's very private. It's very private. I doubt if you'll be able to sign up. Hmm. Uh, so I no, online, that's not true. And well, hello. Yeah. So I'm thinking, what kind of shit? Like a thousands of people go, and you're like, oh, oh yeah. well, you, you, I don't think you can get there, you know, because she want to do it by herself. Well, with a million people. Wow! Oh, a lot! Of, you know, a lot of people yeah. go. A lot of people are there. Yeah. Yes, 
And guess what? I said, well, I'll just go. And I just said, I figured, screw you. I'll just go as press. But yeah. he was like, oh, well, well, let me look on the, let me look on the, um, on the web page. Oh, because I told her I'd go and check it out. She, on the web page. She goes, oh, well, let me look on the web page. Oh, actually, you can register. Oh, well, they must, <laughs> oh, have, they wow. must have changed it. No, they didn't change. <laughs> they didn't change shit. <laughs> they didn't change anything. Same as it is every yeah, damn year. <laughs> no. It's just, I, I, but I you know just, how people uh, do. You know how people yeah. do. You. Yeah, my radio, my uh, co-host last year sucked dick, so I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to be bothered so to you know go it with wasn't her. Me. <laughs> <laughs> And it wasn't. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> neither. It, 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 JJ said it. You know, it wasn't me then because I said you know what I said. And then oh, and I then and like then my you. friend Tashina said uh, that you know that's not my me either. <laughs> and the reason she's you know because she's she's a lesbian that's why she made that comment. <laughs> just just in case any of you out there in Radio Land don't know about my my lesbian. She Silent is, giggles. She, Silent giggles. She is a black lesbian. Blesbian. That's a funny name. I call her my Blesbian. <laughs> Blesbian. Black oh, Blesbian. You cracked me up the other day. You, you had me on, you know, you cracked me up the other day what we were talking about. It was just hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah, about last, yeah, last week. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, well, last week. I guess we'll pass on that. But anyway, okay, so can I tell you about my book? Go for well, it. Yes, that's what we want to talk about. Your okay. books and all okay. Your stuff. So, not only am I entertaining radio host, I wrote this cool novel called A Good Case. It's the behind the scenes look at the billion dollar home health care industry in senior care. So, if you read the novel The Help and saw the movie, they made a movie about maids. How do you do that with caregiving? Well, I did it with caregiving. It's very similar. You go behind the scenes. I pull the curtain back on the caregiving world in Los Angeles, which, as we know, wow. can be a bit corrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not, well, it, not the agencies being criminal unless you consider a criminal when you take old people's money. Yeah, so, right, but there's right. a, it, it's a system built on, on taking their money. But mm -hmm. there's some good agencies, not all. Right. But there's okay. maybe 20% good, 80% is just in it for the money. Oh, yeah. And so... Cool. It's the truth, and uh, the caregiver itself. You got twenty percent great caregivers, eighty percent are a bunch of hustlers, just a bunch of people from the street putting on uniforms and working for your mother or father. That's, right? <laughs> wow, that's scary. It that's is scary, scary. Uh, but a good case answers all the questions about senior care. But I tell it through a set of circumstances. I used to be a caregiver about eight years ago, and it's appalling what you see. But I write a story where you laugh, you cry. It's very entertaining, mm. and it answers all the questions because I don't believe in self-help. I don't right. like self-help novels. I figure if you're not helped by now, screw it. You just you're just messed up. <laughs> you're because, a messed up yeah. mess. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> right? Totally Who keeps gotcha. picking up one book after another? Self-help, self-help, self-help. You ain't figured life out yet. <laughs> a <laughs> lot of a lot of idiots <laughs> have it, and you can exploit them for your for money for that. <laughs> Well, oh come on, <laughs> come on! Why can't I be a hustler from the street? Write a damn self-help <laughs> novel, take a bunch of chumps' money. Come on, right. why not? <laughs> At least I'm not Somebody hurting nobody. Said to me the other day, they're going to write a book about how about bad job interviews. <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> how to not give a bad interview. job interview? Yes, yeah, right. Don't pick your exactly. Nose. And <laughs> okay, right? I mean, we, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory, right? But yeah, you'd be no. surprised. You'd be surprised what no. people do. And she told me some stories, and I said, you've got to be kidding me. No, there are some people, like, people seriously. Yeah. 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 I'm going to write a, because, I'm gonna write a story about my retarded hmm? son. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm, gonna, I'm just kidding. He's not really retarded, but... He acts I'm like it. I say, why are you laughing? Because <laughs> he's hopefully he's listening, so I can fuck with him. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> ma, 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 ma. Then he'll. I need money, ma. Story about man. good mothers. <laughs> yeah, nah. Well, you know, it's just like it's it's what you go through with um, a special needs child. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know what I mean. I want to write a book about that kind of stuff. Well, as that a parent, is a helpful a book, though, parent, because it's very you know? challenging. If you're telling me the truth, or are you pulling my leg? No, I'm, he was a very challenging child. I, I went through a lot with that kid. A lot of um, 
therapy and a lot of th- things I I did with him. Yeah, it, it is, it's a little, yeah. it's yeah. There's a story there. So what did you guys do this weekend? Because it sounds like I'm interviewing you, Jenny. I'm doing my job. And it sounds like I'm interviewing you. Hey, what did you guys do this weekend? No, uh, no we were talking about some shows that we got coming up because we didn't have any shows this last weekend, which sucks because I really mm-hmm. want to cover some stuff. But what do you, yeah, I, so I like I, the fact you went to Earth and went in fire. That was nice. No shit. You got yeah, any and other, guess what? Guess uh, what? Yeah, what? Mama's going to be real nice to you two. When I do get, I have some, a little bug in my ear, told me there may be another show, and Mama's going to get you all some tickets for free. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and, I, and I will. I always, I, one thing you'll learn about me through the grapevine is that I keep my word. That's all I got is my word. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's all we have at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, um, so that so a good cause is about the healthcare industry, especially when it comes to adult yes. care. Okay. Yes, and, a, a and, good case, and I'm going to. It's called a good case. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you ever it's had any personal exper- ex- personal experiences <laughs> with that stuff yourself, like your own parent or any like anybody well, well, in your family? I, I worked. I worked in the industry, right. and a good case. Uh, we have uh, heroes in there from everything from a, a hound dog being a hero, saving a woman's life. True story. Oh, I write wow. about a lady who was rescued three days, uh, but I write it different. But a true story. I brought her back to health. She laid in the garage for three days in the middle of February in Orange County. I changed the location. She could have died. She was wow. ninety-three Jeez. with pneumonia. When I took the case, oh my god! Uh, That's so and horrible. she told me that she just didn't want she 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 just couldn't do it anymore. She was tired, and she had been fighting for weeks. And they kept taking her to the hospital and send her home. And I said, "Look, if you fight, I will fight with you. But I need you to fight right. because I knew I could get her back to health. Because uh, a lot of times a caregiver comes in and they're dirtier than the senior. So she was oh. not getting well because the bacteria floating around her freaking house." was being carried around by the freaking caregivers. Oh, oh. got you. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Get it? So she's 93. She can't. She doesn't have a strong immune system like no. we do. Yeah, okay. right. Not at that point. Yeah. So so those bees are coming in and out, smoking and doing whatever they do and putting their, their feet everywhere and chilling out. And they don't have the, you know, you can't do that, you know, taking your shoes from the outdoors in through her house when she's walking through her bathroom bare feet. Those little things oh, are okay. life it's crucial, crucial right. when you're trying to get rid of germ when you have a bacteria running amok in the house. So what I asked mm-hmm. the owner, I said, let me be the only person on the case. Get everyone out. Mm. So I stayed there for 21 days. Wow. And till she threw me out. That's how good she felt. She's like, bitch, get out. I got her out of bed, back to her old self, which nice. means she was a cranky little thing. But uh-huh. I got her back to her old self. I was cooking like turkey and roast beef, and they were they had been making her like little cups of soup and uh, tuna sandwiches, like old people do eat. Yeah. They don't just eat soup and crackers, right? Mm-hmm. So. I started making meals. She had plenty of food, and, and you know, I wasn't going to starve while I was there. Right. And so one day, she was laying in bed, and she goes, what's that smell? And I said, that's turkey and, and, and mashed potatoes. She goes, oh, really? For me? And I was like, yes. And so I brought her her tray, and she gobbled it up. She had started to come around, but you got to, what did they say, feed a cold, starve a fever. But the point is... A lot of people don't really know how to take care of a scene. You take care of them like you take care of yourself. Yeah. Right, and, yeah. And so it's, and, and when you're dealing with uh, somebody that could be leaving this world, it, it's got to be a level of importance. Yeah. Because for some people, it's not at the paycheck. Right, right. that's true. That's true. You, you know, so we have, I tell, talk about that case, and then I also, mm. I write, t- a diff- I, write I, I entwine ten cases into a novel. And one of my cases I worked was a haunted house, true oh, haunted house. Wow. <laughs> That'd be interesting. On yeah. the ocean. I write it in Santa Monica. Oh. That's not where it took place, but okay. the house was haunted. Oh, wow. Nice. Crazy. Yes. That wasn't, huh? That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that was a tough case to work. So, and it's a mystery adventure, and um, it's you, it's it's very uh, well written. It's done very well. I've toured the West Coast from Santa Barbara down into Los Angeles, and then I did the East Coast from Pennsylvania into North Carolina. 
Oh, mm. cool. Yeah, so it's I, it's fun. I love being an author. I'm an author first, and I do my radio because you know what the radio is. You know, we we have to get the word out. I have I have something to say, yeah, Jenny. Yeah, that's what the radio is for: <laughs> is to be a platform for other projects that we're doing, like TV, yeah. movies, books, whatever it may be. Radio is. Um, I mean, I just have a fu- I just have fun on, on the fucking radio, but that's that's me. Yeah. I've been doing it, but I've been doing it for six years. So you know, I mean, I just have a blast. I like to cover the concerts and events and things. It's. I mean, there are perks. Yeah. There are perks to being uh, in media, uh, like entertainment and stuff. Things that you there is. you can do that um, not everybody gets the opportunity to do in life. So exactly. I, I have a blast. Exactly. I, I like my life regardless. Well, you well, there's a lot of things going on around town, and and we should be respected. I take my show yeah. and like you and JJ do very seriously. Yes. And I won't be pimped out by some of these celebrities. Now I have to admit, I love my. See, you're you you're used to them, and you have a different spin. Although you're very straightforward. Oh yeah, um, I just but, I just don't cut. I just don't. Uh, I cut through the bullshit. I don't care if you're celebrity yeah. or you're not. Yeah. I'm going to treat you the same way that I would treat anybody else. Mm-hmm. And if you're disrespectful yeah. to me, trust and believe, I'm going to chew your ass a new one. Exactly. I don't give a crap who you are. I don't care if you're damn well, see, uh, Donald Trump or you're fucking uh, <laughs> Shakira or you're who the hell you are. I'm still going to tell it to you the real. That's why. I well, here's it. the thing. I, I do have a pet peeve because my old station owner great guy and he's and we're still friends he told me a story that i know is true because i knew the the host i don't know them personally but i you know you follow people on your on your station so one guy had on guns and roses took him over the top guns and roses now this is guns and and roses roses. i love them i love guns and roses blasted them out blasted his show out everywhere to everyone they knew text Media. I don't know about the newspaper, but you know, social media and eighty thousand people. I mean, it was crazy. Right. And then his the guy like down the hall or somebody I forget wh- where it was had Susan Sarandon on, yeah. which is I huge, love, right? I love, yeah. love Susan Sarandon. Okay, love guess what? Chick. She didn't do anything media. Did no posting. Now either now as cool as she is, I think she may have people that do it for her, but. You know what that would have meant for that radio host to have Susan Sarandon blast out that she's coming on the show? Oh, yeah, right. totally. Totally. Yeah, and and so, they should already and, know and to so do you, that. They're, it's media coverage for them. And if they don't put out a blast that they're going to be on something, how's anybody going to know that they're on something? And then how are you going to get media coverage and and talk about all your upcoming co- projects, TV shows, movies, right. uh, albums, whatever, right. whatever you're doing? If you don't talk about it, and put it out everywhere, and then people aren't going to know about it. And then who's going to buy it, or who's going to come see you, or who's you know? It's, know and then well, it's just I mean, basically you're doing it for nothing, and you're a dumbass. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I look. This, this is my new pet peeve. I tell people straight up. I tell their management or the agent. If you can't blast out my show, don't fucking bother coming. Right. Just don't right. even come in. Don't right. even enter the building. Right. Because I can roll this by myself. It's wrong. Because, look, we're really lifting them on another level. If right. you can't put it out there, because look, I'm in the business, too. It ain't all about you, boo. Right. right. That's true. And and I don't, there's no excuse. Because then what if I don't put you that you're coming on my show? What if I'm like a Howard Stern and I don't say you're coming on? You'd be pretty upset, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. So it's my new pet peeve, but you know what? I'm not I'm not stepping off of it because there's so many people that do. The ones that aren't willing, then I don't even want to talk to you. Especially if your A listers will 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 promote you, and then you have Joe Schmuck that comes on. We love him. We love you, Joe Schmuck. But you're not willing to like your SH doesn't stink. Right. Right. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's true. It well, depends, you're, it depends so you're on too the, kind because you're on the air. You're on the air on your show. You're too kind. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on the gas. It depends on the gas. But I, I pretty much just like I, I know the nature of the business now, and I tell them mm-hmm. all like, look, you got to fucking promote the damn thing because how are people supposed to know about your upcoming stuff or your social media or your websites or your whatever if you don't you know put out a blast about it. So I always well, make. So I always commercial. make. So it's I always free. make them all. I make everybody except for you know who. We're not going to talk about it. 
right. other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I've had them all every single week. Like they all go out and put something out. Right. They all say, exactly. you know, all the bands that are on, like, yeah, we're gonna be on. You know, come, you know, listen to us on Jenny's show on such and such a date, da, 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 and we're gonna be at LA Talk Radio and blah, blah, blah. And they put out a, you know, put the link and the number and all that stuff. So I mean, most most everybody's been really cool about uh, putting out a blast beforehand. But they'll be good. I mean, mm-hmm. we've right only had a couple that didn't. So I mean, you know, it's good to you know what I mean because they're smart to explain them why if they don't know. Um, if they don't know by now, they're really retards. <laughs> right, and, and, and just, that's the thing. You know what it is? We them. we I, we give and people do give people the past. And I had people explain this and that and all kinds of explanations. And whenever people start off by saying, "Oh, I'm not making an excuse," well, you are. So my <laughs> thing is that they. <laughs> <laughs> they charge you for commercials on TV. That's what advertisement is. Here you can come on my show and talk about all your stuff, and we have thousands of listeners. Right. So, so we're giving you your commercial. Right. So, yeah. And and people people do understand. That. And guess what? People respect us and respect the show. We're not asking for uh, to like bow down, but let's yeah. have the mutual level of respect. If you can't have a mutual level of respect for what I do, then you're really not welcome in my space. Period. Right. And and I like it when the the bands bring me a bunch of free shit. <laughs> yes. I get a lot Isn't of swag. Classy? I get a lot of swag from a lot of our, our bands. We had a band, uh, heavy, Vietnamese heavy metal band, Zavang. Yeah. What's up, Zavang? Zavang. Um, <laughs> Zavang. <laughs> it's, called, it's spelled D A V A N G. I just like saying the name. It's funny. No, they brought us whiskey. <laughs> yeah. They brought us a oh, bottle wow. of whiskey. It was awesome. We drank during the broadcast. That, that is awesome. I had, I had fun because they're because they're grateful and they love you, and that's what that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Rock and rollers are the best, right? Because they bring yeah. their music. Yeah, and we always get free tickets to everything, so it's really awesome. I like to go to a lot that's of stuff. That's awesome. I like to go to concerts. Um, but who what, who no, sent the fruit? Mm, the fruit. Oh, that was who sent uh, the fruit? That was Dilly Briggs of the Subject Press. All right, thank you. Sub Dilly. <laughs> Dilly Briggs. That was nice. Yes, yeah, she's awesome. Delicious. She's awesome. That was uh, very nice. Wow. Of her. That was her little Thanksgiving but, uh, day basket for us. That was nice. That was very that was nice. nice. Of her. Yeah, they're going to be doing wow. an interview on me in um, January. Where at? Where at? Uh, where, where, the, so I can check the, you out. It's for the subject press. It's, um, I'm not really sure. Oh, I'll, awesome. I'll have to get all the details, but they're doing an interview, and I'm doing an interview with them. Uh, Sasha George, who's an author, I guess a famous author, and um, nice. also Dilly Briggs, who works for her for the Subject Press. So they're going to be on here on the seventeenth of January. But uh, what's your other well, book I, about? What's your other book about the iceberg one? Okay, well I have iceberg. It's um, it's a true story. Um, when I was twelve and my younger brother was ten, he fell into the frozen Seven River oh, no. along the Chesapeake Bay. Whoa. Playing a game called Iceberg. Whoa. And, yeah, in 20 feet of water, they decided to, outside of the pier, around the pier, was uh, kind of mushy, but you could walk on it. So they took the sticks and the brush from around the cove, like 10-foot sticks, 8 to 10-foot, you know, branches, and busted up the ice so they could float around on these little bergs. So they called them icebergs, just so they could float around. Oh, well, wow. the water, once you break up water on ice, it's going to expand. Right. So he was unable to get back to shore. Oh, crap. And that day, back in the 70s, if you left the house, you better know where your younger sibling was. Right. I had no idea that my younger brother was even outside. But thanks to God, I had a dream. I had a premonition, as they call it. And I had a dream that he fell in the river, and I was afraid to go on the, the ice. Right. But I had a best girlfriend, little blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl from California. Uh, I became friends with her in the 1970s, and she had a new pair of skates. So she wanted to go on the river that day, and I didn't want to. I said something bad is going to happen to my brother, Lauren. So anyway, we head out to the Severn River, and we're going to cross over to the Magazine, where all the older kids were smoking pot, cigarettes, and drinking back Blackberry brandy. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Blackberry brandy. Remember the, nice. Well, I was 12, so back then, you know, just somebody 16 or 17, that was a cool crowd. Right. right. 
That's true. So we're heading across, and she had a crush on a, a guy that I call Richard Roundowski in my book. She had a crush on him. So once she found out he was across the river, we were going to journey across. I'm in my fish head converse. She's in her new ice skates. And here comes another friend of mine who says, guess what those crazy kids are doing at the uh, the community beach? We're like, what? They, they're playing iceberg. They busted up these chunks of ice, and they're floating along the river. And we're like, okay, whatever. We start heading uh, across the uh, the river. And she says, Lawrence is out there. Uh-oh. And I had told my girlfriend my dream. Oh, wow. And she talked me into getting on the ice. Because I said, she said, Lawrence is not around. Look, everything will be okay. So anyway, when she said that she turned white as a ghost, I did too. (laughs) (laughs) And and so uh, I went and I I looked in her eyes and I and I could. It's I write about it in the book, but she couldn't have cared less. And and I didn't know that at the time. I was very naive. But when I turned to go, I looked behind me and my best girlfriend was gone she headed across the river so that taught me the early lesson in life that a woman will leave you for a man she'll say the hell with you <laughs> that's just Best sad or not damn <laughs> and she was gone but who was behind me was my girlfriend that i had dropped her for was uh who i call bernadette barnes so we head to the i cross four coves on foot around four bends of uh, water on ice to get to the community beach and i see my brother and i scream lawrence what are you doing out here get to shore and he says i can't and he was bullied to get on the water i mind you i grew up in a all white community all white uh in the 70s so they did not call us all the time by our name by our first name Mm. and so uh, they were giggling and laughing and just playing. They had no idea the danger that they all were in. And so I got to my brother, and I said, do you want me to hold your hand? And he said no. And anyway, on the fourth jump, I heard a splash. I turned. I heard my name. He said, Cindy. And I turned around, and he was gone. And there were four fingers, like, standing up. The universal reaction is to, when you hit bottom, hold your hand as high as you could. And I saw the little mittens, little red mittens. I jumped back to him, reached down into the water, and pulled him up with all of my might. Wow. And um, saved his life. You have to read the book. I'll make wow. sure I get you a copy when I see you again. Oh, my and God. That's And my incredible. younger brother went on to play for the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, my oh. God. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Harlem Globetrotters. He, he is a principal in Orange County, New York, for a high school. What's wow. what's up, uh, uh, younger brother? What's, what's <laughs> yeah. his name? Lawrence Washington. What's up, Lawrence, Lawrence Washington? Washington? What's up? <laughs> if you're listening in New York, what's yeah. up? We're glad you're still here. And, and, yes, yes. And you know, Jenny and JJ, that's a lesson in life. You know, when kids are bullied, you know, a lot of kids now they take their life. Unfortunately, you you don't know what you can be if you you. But they got to fight that darkness. You know, no, that's true. Very um, true. When you read Iceberg, all the lessons are in it because you and I have lived through it. Yeah. We've lived through it. Oh yeah, we've been there. I'm surprised. You know, I came out but the it's other hard side. to get those younger kids. Hmm. I'm surprised I came out the other side. I'm still here, yeah, exactly. damn it! I'm still here. Yeah. It's amazing. You're I, still I, here. I have one. Que- I, have, I have one question to ask you, um, uh, hmm? and I, I'll explain it to you later. Um, are you okay. an, are you a negative blood type? I have a reason I asked this. Uh, I'm not even sure anymore. I used to know my blood type. I don't even recall. Okay. There's a reason Is There's it, a reason why I ask. Okay, because it's a certain type of people or to, something? It has to, yeah, it has to do with the premonition thing. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it. Oh, okay. Time. I just thought that was an interesting yeah, you question. Tell me you would, yeah, I would answer it if I knew, but I, I, I don't know offhand. It's a good, it's a good question, though. I'll, I'll explain it yes. someday to all you weirdos. But you know there. what? <laughs> Jenny, I want to tell you and JJ, I also have some great news. I listened to your show the other week, and this is not me. You know how some people you like, if you have a race car, then I have a bigger race car. No, yeah. this is real. <laughs> I, I plugged. Uh, somebody had been working with me for months, yeah, uh, and I just hadn't got back to them. But it's an old friend of mine that I grew up with. Anyway, he has a radio station oh, in cool. my hometown, Baltimore. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, 
And Hammer Away Show will be syndicated starting tomorrow oh, on Mix Station Radio. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's so wonderful. Yes, it is. We're, we're being syndicated Thank in you. Maine, so that's cool. Yes. <laughs> it's, I know. It's Maine. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Us, yeah. yeah. But it's, you know how people Maine do. Hey, I got Hey, I got it. Hey, I got Mar- it. Mar- Mar- so Mar- I? I'm my opinion. So much. My opinion, Mar- Maryland's cooler. Um, <laughs> more people there. They probably that? actually. I said Maryland's cooler. Uh, I'm yes. on, I, I will well, be on, we'll be on a well, tiny little radio station in northern Maine on the Canadian border. So you know, uh, I don't know how many people are going to actually listen, but that's okay. It's okay. I Maryland's think a lot better. of people will listen. To what else cooler. they got to do? But this is the radio. <laughs> I'm Maryland's cooler. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. See, that's good. So, See that your so, hard your hard work well, is paying we, off. Right. Ooh, maybe next we, next yes. we need to get you on iHeartRadio. Yes. Cool. And I know the magic way to we get in. To, well, we <laughs> have to figure something out. But we got a party coming up. I talked to my friend who I talked about you and JJ as well. But I think with uh, another friend of mine, a promoter, mm-hmm. us meaning you and you, Jenny and JJ, yeah. and the gentleman at Mixed Station, because they're coming out to L.A., him and their him and his partner. Oh, we said we should throw just a huge party. Oh, that'd oh. be great. And, yeah, I'd be down Yeah, and figure it out, right? Totally. Yes. We have access to all kinds of different, whatever you need. Bands, acts, okay. artists, food trucks. We got to figure it out. Vendors. We'll figure it out. But it's yeah. got to, we got to do something to kind of pop our, not just to pop our, well, pop our collar, but also, you know, it'd be good to broadcast live our, our own party. Heck and yeah. We go to enough events. We go to enough events, we right? Might, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. We want to start throwing our own events and concerts too. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you, you know go. what I mean? Start hosting your own stuff. It doesn't always have to be somebody else, you know, going to somebody else's stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. That's one of our and next goals. That, so, yeah. hmm? That's one of our next goals. Next things that we exactly. want to accomplish. So yeah. So what what are we doing for the holiday? Anybody out shopping yet? Uh yeah, no. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. I get a bunch of I get a bunch of free I shit mean, and then I give it away for gifts. <laughs> and then I only need to buy it for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I know she like rock Thank stuff, you. So. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. What did JJ say? Uh, what did you say? I said, um, I just have to shop with my wife, and she likes rock and roll stuff. So yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah, and car and comic there books, you go. comic books. Uh, you know, yeah. And heavy it's metal. Basic, yeah. If, if I get some, um, well, who's around? I was gonna say Motorhead. Some free, tickets, but, some but free Mimi's stuff that you that. Yeah, no. What did you say? <laughs> I heard that. He said. He said. He said. <laughs> He says he's going to get some Motorhead tickets, but Lemmy's Lemmy's not not around. (laughs) Right. I hear you. Yeah, get some Motorhead tickets. And neither neither is his protege. Yeah, get some Motorhead tickets. Uh, (laughs) Well, who knows? Maybe we know somebody Uh, who's doing well. uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's strong. Um, (laughs) All right. Well, unfortunately, it's getting to be that point where we have to wrap up. It sucks. Yes. I always like talking to you. Thank you for having me. You were a blast. Thank you so yes, much. You're funny. Uh, you're funny as hell. <laughs> and you and I, I want to read your books too, so they'd be cool. Yes. That'd be good. Okay. Um, They're available Author House, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all online booksellers. Well, we're going to get them because I want to read them. That'd be good. Okay. So thank you very much, Cynthia Hammer, author, inspirational, motivational speaker. Yay. Uh, and uh, radio DJ. Yes. Soon to be in Maryland. Yes. So... She's going to Thank you Baltimore. for having me. Take she's care, do- you guys. She's doing Thank big you. things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Love you. We will see you next bye-bye. week. Please be safe. Bye-bye. Please be safe. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. bye. That was Cynthia Hammer from the radio show Hammer Away wow. on LA Talk Radio Channel 1. Yes. Uh, she has two books out, A Good Cause, about elder abuse in the healthcare industry. Um and just all the horrors that go along with that. And so go check that out. Uh, like she said, it's on Author House, Barnes & Noble. Uh, where else did she say? Um, all online books. Yeah, like Amazon, all that stuff. Yes. Go to A Good Cause. And then the other one's called Iceberg, about her brother falling through the ice and her uh, having a premonition about it ahead of time and, and, and saving his life. And now... 
Well, I say he's not now, but now he's a, a principal for a school in New York, so that's yeah. pretty cool. And yeah, that's very he good. was on the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh my God, that's pretty freaking awesome. I've so, probably um, seen him then. You probably have. So thank you so much, Cynthia, for being on our show this week. We had a blast, as Yay! always. Uh, we're going to play a couple. Uh, well, actually, I don't even have time. Well, from our last. from our um, Here's from our guest last week. Sonia, oh, hey guys, this is Sonia Harley, and you're listening to Ginny's Real Talk on the Block on LA Talk Radio, Channel One, iHeart Radio, baby, and iTunes. Don't forget that. Mwah. Boop, 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 boop. Jeez. <laughs> All right. I don't know. That just, that just we will be back <laughs> next Wednesday, like every week. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> every Wednesday, 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Jenny's Real Talk on the Block, LA Talk Radio Channel 1, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Sonos, Google Play, and we are now syndicated on all uh, Amazon, Amazon Alexa devices, and we will be featured on Kix FM, K I X X. FM in Northern Maine very soon. Good. Uh, so you will be all right, Northern Maine. I'm a maniac now. Yes, you will be a maniac, as we all are um, <laughs> from Maine. So we will talk to you next week. I'm Have a, a great time. We're Audi. We'll see you uh, next week. Oh, our, our guest next week. Who's our guest next week? We have an author coming on. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and we, I wasn't anybody. Oh, Bye, anyway. Felicia. Bye. We'll see you next <laughs> week. Peace. <laughs>You're listening to Jenny's Real Talk on the Block with Jennifer DeVoe, only on L.A. Talk Radio.